Hi, I'm Gavin Robertson, a former New South Wales and Australian off spinner and a part time bat. Uh, cricket began for me probably around the age of nine, and all of a sudden I'm playing cricket with a bunch of mates from Dundas, and none of us had really ever played before. And somehow I got the ball first, I think because I could run in and bowl straight. And the bigger fluke is I took seven for four, and all of a sudden it became really serious with my parents, and that's how it happened. I think I was 16 and a half, 17, and I got picked in second grade for the first game, did okay, and Ian Davis come to me, who was the former uh, Australian opening batsman, and he said, um, you're gonna come to first grade for the second game. A couple of years went, and you know I got picked into the Australian under 19 team a year and a half uh, later, and the world just moved quickly from then on. Next minute, I'm into being picked for New South Wales to go to Vic uh, Victoria and debut at the MCG. And um, yeah, it would have been a lot better if Jamie Siddons hadn't got 120. That would have been a lot better. I remember we won the final uh, of 93-94, the Shield final. I thought, well, you know, I've got a winter off. And next minute, Pete Overton uh, calls and says, I'm coming around, where are you? Why? You've been picked on the Australian side. I'm going to do an interview. And I was shocked. I was going to go to Sri Lanka and Pakistan. I was completely shocked and it was exciting. And um, you know, life just took off. And then back home to Australia for the 94-95 season, which is the famous Australia v Australia A series. That was incredible. I think we made so many good players off the back of that series. You know, when you go Hayden, Langer, Ponting, Lehman, Blewett, uh, the list is long of players that had to play in Australia A and fight. And, and then in the ensuing 10 years became great test players for us. So. It didn't work out the best for myself. I um, didn't make the squad that was going to go overseas for the Australian squad. And then I thought, well, I've got New South Wales. Uh, seven days later, I was dropped out of New South Wales completely. I still, I, I can't give you any answers. All that I can tell you is five weeks later, Centrelink was an amazing place to be. You know, after four or five weeks, I, there was no money coming in. I couldn't feed the kids. I, I had to do the Centrelink thing, and I, I went that way really quickly. And I, I, I listened today to younger players like Young Pukowski and, and different players that are having some mental issues. I, I put myself in that tag then. I, I ran away. I basically didn't want anyone to see where I was going, how I was going and then next minute I got picked. Shane Warne was injured for the New Zealand tour. This is 1997-98 and uh, so January of 98 I head to New Zealand to play one day games and get the most wickets and do quite well and I come home and go straight back to work and uh, then there's an announcement 10 days later of the Indian test squad and I'm in it. Shane Warne and Stuart McGill and I thought well I'm just happy to be there and I'll be happy to make drinks. And it didn't turn out that way. I, you know, Steve War walked back in, we were rooming together, he said, you're gonna play the first test. I said, who are you not playing? And somehow Stuart McGill missed out. And then I played all three tests and, and the only time I ever win a trivia comp, uh, or not a co competition, but a question if they ask who got the most wickets in 98, somehow Warney only got six and I end up getting 12. Actually, it was 2003, late, around about December, and uh, Richard Cheekwe rang me and said, um, Graham Hughes wants your phone number. Uh, can he give you a call? I said, yeah. And he called me and said, I'm gonna be starting a radio show here at 2SM. I want you on board. Right, it was, that was a, another great fluke. And uh, we've been here 17 years now. We have a very, our, our job here is to talk sport, but we are basically, the theory is we're on the end of a bar there's three blokes and a whole bunch of other people in the bar having a quiet one. Could be a lemonade, could be a light one. And they're just listening and talking sport. I, I, I was here and I didn't tell Graham. I was sort of at a, a, an ad break and sent a message to Dr. Charlie Teo, who's a good mate of myself and Steve Wars. I said, when I clean my teeth in the morning, sometimes, I get this funny pain behind my eye, Charlie. What, you know, does that sound weird? 
He said, call me. So I called him the next day. He said, come here. I had an MRI, uh, but then going through, you've got to wait. And then I had to wait to find out it was a, it's a grade four glioblastoma. So I said to Charlie, what's that? He goes, it's the worst. You know, all of a sudden it's, we're six months now I go, and I'm, my attitude is, I don't care what, I, what I've got. I'm just gonna do what they say, take what they say, do what they say, and keep trying to get better each day and keep searching you know, for a good next result. I'm living now, living today. Yeah, it's interesting how it all happens and there's a lot of other people out there going through stuff, so it's no different to them.